with a powerful story here from Harry Smith. That's right. Every once in a while, there's a story that really touches everyone's heart, and it's personal here at NBC. A, a cameraman who we all know and love, and Harry, you found out he had a fascinating story to tell and a story of heartbreak in Rwanda. Well, it's 25 years now since the genocide in Rwanda, and just by chance, we're working with JB, who you all know really, really well, and we were waiting in Los Angeles, as sometimes happened, for <laughs> movie stars to talk to us. And in this conversation, I find out he has an intimate connection to the genocide in Rwanda. And I said, can we tell your story on the show? He said, OK. Uh, a warning, some of the images you're about to see are, are quite stark. So let's just take a look. Kicking around in a foreign country. It's just bustling. It is bustling. Is always better when you have some local intel. But you have to try the corn. We're in Kigali, Rwanda. <laughs> Our colleague, Jean-Bernard Rudigarama, we call him JB, grew up here. Wow, it's so quiet. He almost died here. We found his old grammar school. This was the home of your ideal childhood. We were kids. We didn't care who was a Hutu, who was a Tutsi. I wish things remained that way, but... 25 years ago, Rwanda was a country at war with itself. As the war goes on, civilian massacres are still being carried out. Rival Hutus slaughtered Tutsis in staggering numbers. I just see the faces of the people that were taken out of this world for no apparent reason other than hate. They died in the most awful, awful way possible. 800,000 to a million people were killed in just 100 days, a genocide that was as rapid as it was ruthless. As this is happening, are you thinking, all right, I'm gonna die now? Oh, absolutely. A teenager, half Tutsi and half Hutu, JB was in danger. He fled with a brother to the border, where they found a crowded, chaotic refugee camp. A few days later, JB encountered now retired NBC News producer, True's boss. I hear this voice in English saying, can I help you? And I go, what? You speak English? That was Jean Bernard, he was sitting <laughs> on a fence. Multilingual, JB had quickly found a job working for Australian TV, so NBC hired his brother. The NBC team let them sleep in their van, gave them water and food. Admitted, there's the little things that the NBC team did for me. The simplest act of generosity, but it actually saved us. It really saved our lives. One day, an NBC cameraman asked JB if he wanted to look through his lens. For that camera to have been there and show everything that was going on in the camps, the suffering, the death toll, it made people react. Mm. And then aid started coming in. I understood the power of the camera, and I guess I never looked back. <laughs> I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> JB used the money he earned as a translator to get to England, where an uncle lived. But when that didn't work out, Trues and her late husband took him in, helped him to get to college, became his second family. When you're out there seeing so much misery and so much death, you feel as a journalist, you have to witness it, you have to record it, but you're completely helpless. And to be able to do something for one of those people was a healing experience for me. So. You all right over there? <laughs> I'm okay. Well, I'm glad I was that person. You were yes, you were lucky. Yeah. But a lot of I was lucky out. to meet you. JB had assumed his mother had been killed, but six years after he fled Rwanda, he got news. What was it like when you found out she was alive? <laughs> it was the most joyful moment of my life, I must say. I just never would have thought I would see her again. His mother came to England for JB's graduation from college. And after years of freelance work and honing his craft, JB joined NBC News as a photographer in Los Angeles. You are revealing them to the front, but at the same time you keep walking. JB feels he owes a debt to those who didn't survive. So for several years now, he's traveled back to Rwanda to teach a class in videography. He's darn good at it. It gives me such a joy and fulfillment that at least I've given something back. 
During our visit, JB stopped by to visit a cousin whose wife had given birth just days before. To have survived the genocide and now, <laughs> it's just, it's beautiful, it's amazing. Oh my God, this baby is going to be loved. And the reason the baby is so important and in, from JB's mother's family of 30 immediate cousins, uncles, aunts, etc., of 30, only six survived. Oh. So to be in that room and to see him greet that little child, big stuff. It's just a remarkable story. Right. And, and he goes back, he goes back. Yes. And this is, he, he scrounges equipment from places. We need to scrounge the, the addicts here at NBC and flood this place with equipment because there are all these people who want to learn how to do what he does. It's amazing. We're in the business of finding stories and telling stories, and here's a story that's so remarkable and so close to home. Yeah. It's just, uh, honestly just by chance in this conversation. It's, and he wasn't, he's not somebody who was wanting to come forward no. necessarily no. No. tell this, this story. We've known he this likes guy, to be behind the scenes. So we've sure. known this guy for several years, yeah. and he's not OJB, the refugee from R Rwanda, no, no. etc., and the whole NBC connection. This was not, it's not something he wears on his yeah. no. sleeve. And by the way, he's one of the best cameras. Oh, we've yeah. Had. Uber talent. Un We've all worked with it. I mean, just yeah. thank wow. you. Well, Harry, he picked the right person to trust his My story with, too. I really was beautiful. I'm not even sure we got close to doing the whole thing justice. Yeah. Yeah. I think you did. I think you did. Thank and you. And our very producer, close. Choose, too. And thank you, JB, Amazing. as well.